Hello and welcome to the Creaky Cutest on a Monk and today we are back in Mountain Blade to Bannerlords. This is the 40th episode of this Let's Play. So thank you so much guys for joining me once again. If you've been following from the very beginning, I seriously appreciate your support. Honestly, you guys are exactly why I even make these videos. Now... Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield have been out for a little while now, so it's time to get back into action, time to get back into our normal routine. And since the last episode, I've gone ahead and done a little bit of smithing, just as I said I would. I got myself a little bit more money, um, not a huge amount, however, I got myself about a million or so. I feel like it's going to be enough to get me through this next war because of, you know, certain things during war that happen. I do want to recruit um, at least one other clan as well. So I feel like, you know, an extra million dinars should be enough to help uh, go that way. As you can see, I have picked myself up a few daggers. These are, of course, the much coveted daggers when it comes to smithing. You want to be going around everywhere you can, really buying them up. If you plan on doing a lot of smithing, if you plan on making a lot of money through smithing, and if you're at that stage and perhaps have that spare money to afford those daggers, because... They are rather expensive, especially if you try to actually buy them at the beginning of the game. But yeah, so we got ourselves a fair few. So we're just kind of just making sure we've got enough charcoal to do some little bits. I do want to smelt all of those daggers down. And I absolutely do want to smelt them all down before I actually go ahead and make some more two-handed swords. Or before we try any kind of crafting recipes. Now, FYI, we do have a smithing video on the way. It's going to be the best recipes that I have found. Unfortunately, I just haven't got to that video yet, but it is on the way, guys. Don't forget, if you love Bannerlord's content and want to see more of it, then I'm going to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are not already. So, today's episode is going to be about war. Of course, because, you know, we are a fully-fledged kingdom now, and war is what we are all about. Now, one of the stipulations I kind of set us was that I want to be an independent kingdom before I end this playthrough. And I feel like we are rapidly approaching that. We really, really are. But we do have two kingdoms currently not at war of us, but that we are paying a weekly allowance, basically, for not raiding us. These are the two nations that we need to go to war with. One of them is Valandia. The other one is the Britannians. And of course, my kingdom decided it would be a good time to go to war with them right now. As we can see, we actually outnumber them in strength. We have more towns than them. We have more castles than them. I believe that strength isn't so much the clans. I believe that strength is in... How many troops I personally have sitting in my towns because I do like to stock up those garrisons and that kind of number is what influences the total strength of your armies. As you can see, they do outnumber us in clans by two. They have two more clans than us. That's not a problem, but it's something to think about. As you can see, the Valandians also have two more clans than us as well. But our clans do look rather pretty. Of course, a couple of them are made. We have made a couple of our own clans um, by making our companions into lords. Maybe we could do another one of those, but... At this point, I would like to get stronger clans. I think we are on the cusp. Are turning into a tier 5 clan. Once we do actually manage that and get that tier 5, our march size is going to go up quite a bit. And not only that, but all of our party's march size will also go up as well. So we'll be able to put together a bit more of a bigger army. Until then, however, we're going to have to recruit all of our geezers in. 
And then I'm trying to find um, a couple of leaders with a decent amount of army that doesn't cost us too much influence. But as you saw there, it's kind of slim pickings. The, our uh, kingdom hasn't really recovered yet from the last war. It's been too soon. We really shouldn't have gone to war right now anyway. But you know what? We need to make an episode. We need to make it entertaining. So why not? Now, we are going to start by taking over this city. Now, I reckon it should be a nice, easy city to take over. Um, we've already got the siege camp running. We already have our trebuchets um, building. Now, they are going to build their first catapult before we get a trebuchet up and running. But you know what? At the moment... We seem to be doing rather well with not moving into reserve, so we're just going to continue to play that out. Now, this town is actually ridiculously low on troops. I feel like it's because they're actually they're quite far away from their actual kingdom, so they haven't been able to get enough supply line here, which is good for us because we are 780 up against 120. So, you know, we've got a really good... Um, numbers advantage here so it should be a very quite straightforward battle which is what we like we like straightforward easy wins because that's what we typically try to go for um, especially in banner lords things can get out of hand far too quickly and we do not want to be losing all of our amazing troops that we have managed to collect now it shouldn't be too much longer and these walls will be cracked when they are cracked we are going to lead the assault um, and like I said, it should be a pretty straightforward battle. I am looking to win as much war score as possible from them. I don't necessarily need to take them out, wipe them out. That's not what our mission is. Our mission is to become an independent kingdom. And my stipulation for that is not to be paying taxes to any other kingdom. Instead, I kind of like them paying me taxes. Um, so that's what we're trying to go for. I believe with the Britannians, we are paying a ton every single week. So this is going to really help us out, you know, if we manage to win this war. Even going to war with them right now, we're technically making more money right now than we was before the war. Because we're not paying them taxes right now. And I think the Valandians were actually paying like 4,000 dinars per week, which is, or per day even, which is extortionate. Now, I do remember having a go on the old trebuchet not too long ago. I need to remember the next castle siege we do to actually make ourselves a little catapult and have a little bit of fun with a catapult. I think that would be quite cool. I wonder if we can hit them from back here with our trusty bow. Now, we did work on our bow skills quite a lot. and uh, We have about 100 a bowman skill, which... Isn't a lot, but it should be enough to give us semi-accuracy, uh, even at this range. I, I think I need to put some more points in it, to be fair, um, to even level it up, unfortunately. It's sad because I've been waiting week by week for this new update. And unfortunately, there has been absolutely no news whatsoever. Now, I guess the good news is, is that we know it is coming. And the good news, again, is that their Twitter accounts are very, very active. So the devs are definitely not asleep. They are working on things. But a little while ago, they did um, put some information out saying that you know, this kind of thing is going to take a little bit longer than they would like, unfortunately. But I think we are hoping for it this year, um, which really isn't nice to hear because there's still quite a lot of this year left. But it would be great to know that we do have that kind of deadline, that scope of, you know, where they're trying to put it in. I think fourth quarter, we could probably imagine I do think the castles are bloody beautiful, to be fair. But we won that very, very easily. We've got a little bit of renown, a little bit of influence, and a little bit of morale. We've got some more troops to put in. However, we are actually at cap. So I wonder if they've got any that we can have a look at. Maybe we can upgrade our troops a little bit.
Now I do want to get myself some more cavalry. I swear I remember saying that in the last episode. That's why we've got a few Valandian cavalry um, in our troops at the moment. We've got ourselves some prisoners as well, which we can sell. Sell them in the tavern for a bit of roguery skill points. If we had room. I think that's another thing I need to put points into. It's such a shame that you don't have more skill points that you can't get more levels. Um, it's such a slow grind for levels in, in Banner Lords, it really is. And so you're looking at a character to be around level 30. If you manage to get much more than that, um, you're doing bloody good and you've got a good game going but you know around that level is kind of where you're at so you can kind of aim for a few things to be maxed out but after that you are really squeezing it for points so we can sell all the prisoners It's actually kind of cool. Uh, we actually managed to take that city without having to do the mini action as well. Sometimes when you take a really big city, you have to kind of raid it twice. Not only the city itself, but the keep. Everyone retreats into the keep. We didn't have to do that with this one, which is pretty cool. Now, what I would hope is that we have got ourselves a nice, balanced kingdom. Every single clan member has his own castle. Now we've just taken over city. It's a big piece of territory. Ideally, we should be on the ballot for who gets it. Now, I do quite like having cities. Um, I do actually have a perk where every single city that we have increases our march size by five. So the more of them we have, the absolute better. Of course, it is a little bit of a drain because we do have to stock it full of troops and we do have to maintain it. But personally, I think the bigger march size is really important. And actually having control over those main cities means that you can ensure that they're not taken without your knowledge, that they're not, you know unnecessarily undermanned let's have a little look see ah there we go look at that not only are we up but we've also got a number of lords backing us for the city as well which is pretty cool now i do actually think that we have a lot of influence compared to any other clan um, actually in our kingdom so that would also go hand in hand and why we are up for that nomination let's see what we got here this is just about the town i believe and this is our child i think endurance is probably a good all-round trait i don't know what i want them for right now but i think in general endurance is a good idea so let's go for that we need to get some more party leaders because my brother is someone i currently have leading one of my parties and i didn't want him to be leading a party he was actually in my uh, personal group because I believe I was having him be a smithy a smithy a smith I've been playing arc too much 791 troops it's not the biggest army I've ever seen but you know what it is our army and it will do now we need to buy a few uh, bits of food we are unfortunately out of food so let's sort that out and buy all the grain um, probably not a good idea to dump out your own city for the grain but it is what it is now we also need to make sure that we can put some troops actually into the garrison as well this is our newly obtained city after all at this stage of the game, this isn't our first city after all. We do have an established kingdom. We are kind of set up and good. We've got a quite a few decent policies involved. So I don't necessarily need to look at, um, at the city and look at the loyalty or the security because the policy should be massively helping us and swinging things in our favor. So we don't need to necessarily worry about it too much. 
Um, hence why I'm not going to appoint a governor. In fact, I should probably get my companion back as well. There is currently a governor in my very first ever town. I actually forgot he was even there until we just thought about it. There we go. I think that should be pretty decent. Um, I very much doubt they're going to wade back through our kingdom to get their town back. Um, they've got too many distractions along the way anyway. Let's see if we can recruit some more troops before we go looking for some more trouble. I'm kind of hoping that all the other lords are kind of doing the same and replenishing their ranks. Because when we was putting together our army, it did look like they were a little bit weak, unfortunately. Um, I wonder just how well our kingdom's going to be able to do against Britannia. We can stock around 30 more troops if we can find some. Your settlement is being attacked. Yes, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Unfortunately, I think we're still at war with Sturgia as well. Um, there's not too much we can do about that. Sturgia are a dying kingdom. Um, they have no land. They have no gold. They pretty much have nothing at all. They can only raid our villages, unfortunately. So there's not too much we can do about them. Just making sure that we recruit all of the troops we absolutely can. Kind of want our army to be as maxed as possible because we don't know what we're going to be coming up against. Put a little bit more cohesion in our army as well. It's it's interesting because once you get up to a decent clan size and you get all of the party members you're able to, if you get some good clan leaders, you really don't have to recruit any other um, members into your personal army. You can allow your kingdom to kind of you know, make their own armies while you're using your parties. Because within Banner Lords, if you recruit your own parties, of course, it costs absolutely no influence whatsoever. And if you have the correct party leaders, you're able to get party leaders with like 150 uh, troops minimum. And that times four is going to add up to a decent sized army, probably a good enough sized army to where you never need to have any other troops from the rest of your kingdom that's kind of the goal because it allows your kingdom to do what they need to do when it comes to um, attacking during war or defending their own land it means you're not interacting with them the problem when it comes with kingdoms and with um with war like this in my opinion is when you're having to uh, dictate where your laws are all the time so if you have them all in a single army with you because you want to go ahead and steamroll a certain kingdom the problem is no one's actually looking after your kingdom that way because everyone's under your head um, and in my opinion if that happens for too long that's where the issues arise and I feel like that's what people forget to even think about when it comes to their kingdoms looking after them making sure that they are are balanced is is you know not using up all those resources and dictating uh, where all your troops are all the time but of course it does take time to work up to clan tier five we've been playing for an awful long time and we are just on the cusp of that now oh Hello, Sturgia. You want peace. So we've got 
We've got most of our kingdom not wanting peace and some of our kingdom wanting it. We're going to go with wanting peace. I would rather our villages weren't raided and we're actually able to resupply our towns. There they are, Sturgia. Unfortunately, we didn't really do any damage to them, so no one's paying anyone when it comes to Sturgia. But hey, at least we are not giving them money. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty happy. This bloody castle, I swear, the entire time we have been running this playthrough, this castle has been back and forth traded so much. Luckily, we outnumber them nicely. This is one of the Britannian armies. They only have 280 troops to R800. Now, I'm quite happy about this. Um, that's some good signs. Now, I knew that they outnumbered us by two clans, um, which is fair enough. So I was kind of worried that they were going to be having huge armies. But the fact that the first army we met only had 280 troops, I'm quite happy with. And of course, because we do outnumber them so much, almost three to one, I'm just going to order a straight up charge. Our troops should do the job. The archers, the horse archers, the mounted archers really shouldn't. Go charge on them, unfortunately. Engage is the best option. Same for your archers. Engage is another great option. But we do have some fantastic archers. So it doesn't matter too much if they get melee range. Um, plus we do outnumber these guys so bloody much. It would be interesting to see just how many kills we manage to get. If we manage to get any at all. We do do some mad damage with uh, with this sword. And I did actually have someone comment in one of the other videos asking exactly how I crafted this sword, what the crafting parts were. Um, if you've been following the playthrough at all, we actually crafted this sword live on the playthrough. So maybe look at, you know, going back through a couple of those smithing episodes. I know it's actually rather cheap. I think the blade was one of the first you know, tier 4 blades we actually unlocked. There we go, we got a nice little kill there. I don't actually think it was a kill, but... As I swear I just said, we killed Magus, which happens to be our name. So I'm wondering if we did actually kill Magus, or whether it was our character that actually killed him. Kind of miss... Let's just see if we can get another kill. There we go. Yeah, I think maybe we, we killed Magus, but I don't actually think we killed him. It would probably be knocked out, unfortunately. But it does mean we might have got ourselves a decent prisoner or two in this battle. He is hoping... I wonder just how many clans was actually made up. I didn't bother checking before we entered this battle. Oh, they are all retreating. We have won this by massive amounts. There's so many troops... Um, Retreat and then it must have a low morale um, and they're all just fleeing But I think we did get a couple of kills, so I'm quite happy with that quite an easy battle not only did we get kills but we actually made the um, Made the enemy retreat there And there we go that's done we got some renown influence morale and a decent um, portion of that loot too Let's see how many officers we actually managed to capture. The one, and two, three, four, five, six. Damn, we got ourselves six out of that. That's pretty good. 
I'm pretty happy with that. And we got ourselves a ton of prisoners. Absolute boatload of prisoners. Now, they couldn't have all retreated. So, I'm guessing perhaps this was a bigger army. They have fought someone, took prisoners, and we're getting all the prisoners under the sun. It'd be my best guess. Because that was one hell of a lot of prisoners we just got then. We have 233 prisoners right now. Now that is well over our cap that we're actually allowed. But we do have a town not too far away. So if we just pop over there real quick, we should be able to sell all of these prisoners in our town. Now, if we did actually have any room in roguery at all, or if we actually had points into a roguery, we would score a huge amount of points when it comes to roguery selling all of those, selling 200 troops, uh, prisoners within the tavern. Dungeon. We need to make sure that the officers actually stay in a dungeon because we don't want to give them back. If I give them back to the enemy right now, they're just going to go out and get more troops and be more parties around on the map. And as we're at war, I don't want that. I want prisoners. Having prisoners equals war score. So that all works out rather well. And now if we go to... See if we got any points to put in. We do not. We do not. That's a shame. We would have got bags of points here. But you know what? That was a good little outcome there. Not only did we get our first win, really, of uh, of this war... We actually managed to get a huge score on those prisoners as well. And I believe we have gone up to clan tier 5 too. Look at that guys. Our, uh, our army is now up to 362. And yes, there we go. We are clan tier 5. So that battle, that last battle we just done, we got enough renown there to pump ourselves up to clan tier 5. And because... We are now clan tier 5. We got a huge added bonus to our march size, which I'm quite happy about, actually. That was a huge bit. Over 60 extra troops. To be fair, that could be the whole difference in a battle. Now, I actually need to go ahead and recruit those troops, of course. There's no point in having a bigger march size without actually recruiting troops. So let's go and find ourselves some low-level troops to, uh, to convert. All in all, you know what? Yeah, I think this was a pretty decent start to our war. We have managed to take a key city away from Britannia. They are now back within their land. They've got no foothold within my land. I've now um, managed to secure all of Sturgia effectively, um, which is also pretty cool. That was the last city within the whole Sturgian lot that I didn't have. Um, I believe there is a castle that belongs to the Empire that I do want. But apart from that, we are all Kushti. So it's just on Britannia now. Um, and not only that, we have, of course, won that first initial battle. It's only 300 troops. But you know what? I'll take any win I can, especially at the beginning of a war. All looks pretty good to me. And it looks like we asked um, Kingdom have actually got a another army up and running too. Now, there are only 200 troops, which is a little bit disappointing. But if they can mop up, if they can handle a few of the raiders, then hey, why not? I guess we'll see exactly what they manage to do. And this bloody castle is being raided again. 
I don't know what it is about this castle, but it seems to be targeted an awful lot. But guys, before we do this battle, I'm going to end this episode here. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. And I will see you next week in the next episode. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.